Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today, I will be discussing the sci-fi romance drama film released in 2016, Passengers. Warning, spoilers ahead. Please proceed with caution. In Passengers, we are introduced to the interstellar spaceship Avalon, en route to a colonized world known as Homestead 2. The ship is on autopilot with all its quarters empty as the 258 crew members and 5,000 passengers are in hibernation. However, a sudden encounter with an asteroid belt weakens the ship's shields, forcing power to be diverted to the main shield. Despite the precautions, the ship ends up on a collision course with a massive asteroid, resulting in various malfunctions. Amidst the chaos, one of the hibernation pods is unexpectedly activated. The passenger who awakens is Jim Preston, a mechanical engineer. Jim learns from the automated system that he has been in suspended animation for 120 years, with only four months left until the ship reaches its destination. He is given instructions on his ID band, cabin, and primary activities. Excited yet curious about the other passengers, Jim leaves his cabin and enters an automated classroom. However, he soon realizes that he is the sole occupant and questions why. Unable to receive answers from the hologram, Jim embarks on a search for other people on the ship. To his dismay, he discovers that no one else is awake, and even the informational desk and stewards are absent. Determined to find answers, Jim makes his way to the bridge in an attempt to speak with the captain. Though he is denied access, he observes that none of the main crew members are awake either. Desperate for guidance, he heads to the observatory where he discovers that the ship is actually 90 years away from Homestead 2. Realizing he woke up too soon, Jim sends a message back to Earth but the communication system informs him that it will take approximately 55 years to receive a response. Devastated by this revelation, Jim roams the ship and comes across the ship's bar, where he encounters another individual. However, he soon learns that the person he meets is not an actual human, but an android named Arthur. Puzzled by his presence, Jim struggles to comprehend how Arthur is there ahead of time. The next day, Jim wakes up and heads to the cantina. Unfortunately, he discovers that most items on the menu are reserved for gold-class passengers only. Despite this setback, he manages to fix his hibernation chamber using tools he gathers. However, his attempts to re-enter hibernation prove futile. Jim then decides to explore the crew's hibernation chambers, hoping to find a solution, but his efforts are in vain. As time passes, small malfunctions continue to plague the ship. Jim finds solace in returning to the bar, where he engages in conversations mostly with Arthur. Together, they grapple with the complexities of their predicament and strive to find a resolution. The android provides him with advice that convinces him to break into one of the upscale rooms on the ship and have some fun. Jim explores all the restaurants, games, and entertainment systems, but as time passes, he becomes increasingly miserable being alone. One day, while drunk, he stumbles upon the airlock with spacesuits designed for spacewalks. Jim puts on a suit, goes to the airlock, releases the door, and finds himself mesmerized by the view outside the ship. Floating in space, he feels devastated, but eventually returns inside. He takes off the suit, but finds himself drawn back to the airlock. Contemplating ending it all, he changes his mind at the last moment, slips on a bottle, and is captivated by a woman named Aurora in one of the pods. He listens to her passenger interview and becomes enamored with her. Jim spends his time sitting next to her pod, still listening to her interviews. Back at the bar, he reads some of her work and discusses it with Arthur. He becomes obsessed with the irony of his situation. Going to another planet for a better life, waking up early and finding his perfect woman only for her to be unreachable. Jim can't stop thinking about her and considers waking her up too. The android fails to comprehend his predicament. Jim worries that waking her up for his own benefit would strand her to die on the ship with him. Initially, he decides against it, but as time passes, he can't let go of the idea. He activates her pod and hides as she wakes up. He then returns to his room. Later, he goes to the main concourse and finds her there, just as confused as he was a year ago. Jim reveals that they are the only ones awake and takes her to the observatory. He explains that they can't reach the crew or the main commands of the ship. Aurora panics and wants to return to her pod, but Jim tells her there's no equipment to help them get back into hibernation effectively informing her that they are stranded. They return to the concourse, and Jim advises Aurora to rest since she just came out of hibernation. She pities him for spending over a year alone on the ship. Feeling regretful, Jim asks Arthur not to disclose that he was the one who woke Aurora up. The next day, Aurora wakes up and they go to the concourse together. 
They have breakfast and discover an issue with the automated info desk. Aurora realizes Jim has been eating the same breakfast for over a year and gets him a menu from the gold class. They discuss the possibility of repairing the pods, but Aurora isn't as willing as Jim to give up. She searches the infirmary and examines research documents before arriving at the crew's hibernation quarters, attempting to force open the doors. Jim notices multiple malfunctions throughout the ship. Later, Aurora expresses her discontent with life on the Avalon. She writes exercises around the ship and swims in the pool, becoming increasingly aware of her predicament. She visits the cantina to interview Jim, intrigued by his story. She inquires about his reasons for immigrating to the colony. Initially responding with company slogans, Jim further explains his hope to build a new life and become somebody on the new world. They eventually find themselves in the observatory, where Aurora finally reveals her purpose for being on the ship. Unlike other passengers, she possesses a round-trip ticket. Her plan was to spend a year on Homestead 2, return to Earth, and become the first journalist to achieve such a feat, writing an extraordinary story. Aurora gradually loses hope of finding a solution to their current situation, while Jim discovers a way to uplift her spirits. He takes her dancing, to the cinema, and to the basketball court. Finally, he introduces her to Arthur at the bar. She momentarily relaxes until the reality of their situation returns to her. Jim remains alone with the android, tormented by guilt for what he has done. In another scene, he is seen tinkering with something, while Aurora enters the observatory to find a miniature Chrysler building he created for her. Sometime later, they venture on a date to the bar, sharing stories about their lives. Aurora reveals that her father passed away during her teenage years. After dinner, Jim escorts Aurora to the airlock, and together they don their spacesuits for a spacewalk. This marks Jim's first opportunity to share this magnificent experience with someone. They switch off the magnets on their boots, floating together in space. Returning inside, they embrace and retreat to Jim's cabin, where they spend the night together. Soon after, they start living as a couple. Aurora moves into Jim's cabin and journals about her life on the ship. They exercise, dine, and sleep together. Jim explores further and discovers the hydroponics bay, surprising Aurora with flowers. During their journey, the ship passes by a red giant, and they visit the observatory to witness its beauty. On Aurora's birthday, they celebrate at one of the ship's restaurants and later at the bar. While Jim goes to the washroom to prepare the ring he made for Aurora, she converses with Arthur. Unaware that he was supposed to keep it a secret, Arthur reveals that Jim intentionally woke her up. Astonished, Aurora confronts Jim in disbelief and anger, running away in a panic. Jim returns to his cabin and realizes all of Aurora's belongings are gone. The next day, he encounters her in the canteen, but she flees upon hearing him speak. Aurora reaches a point of desperation. One night, she storms into Jim's cabin, physically assaulting him with the intent to kill. Attempting to apologize and explain his actions, Jim communicates with her over the intercom, expressing his love for her. Nevertheless, Aurora remains unforgiving, unable to forgive him for stealing her life. One fateful night, as Jim rests in his cabin, another malfunction occurs. The ship encounters a critical error, and the main command system shuts down. Subsequently, he enters the elevator, and it malfunctions. Aurora enters the main concourse, and discovers that Jim has planted a tree there. Afterwards, she goes to the cantina, where the food dispensary is also experiencing malfunctions. Suddenly, they hear the voice of the deck chief over the comms, inquiring about the tree planter. They rush to the concourse and find Gus Mancuso standing in front of Jim's tree. Introductions are made, and they inform the chief about the situation. He is puzzled by the failure of three pods. Mancuso escorts them to the bridge and determines that there is a problem with the ship, but the system information needs to be manually checked. As they leave the bridge, a robot almost falls on them, prompting Aurora and Jim to inform Mancuso about the increasing malfunctions happening throughout the ship. He finds it unacceptable and demonstrates how to collect the data. Mancuso inspects the pods while Jim joins him and identifies the issue with Aurora's pod. The deck chief expresses disapproval of Jim's actions. Later at the bridge, Mancuso reviews the collected data when Aurora joins him. They discuss the malfunction with her pod, but he regrets not being able to assist. Jim enters with the 16th damaged robot. Feeling unwell, Mancuso heads to rest but coughs up blood as he departs. That night, Aurora struggles to sleep and decides to go for a swim. Suddenly, gravity is lost throughout the ship, endangering her life as the pool water moves with her. Luckily, the gravity drive resets just in time for her to escape. 
they all encounter each other while searching for Mancuso. Back at the bridge, they gradually uncover the ship's issues. Mancuso deduces that a significant system failure occurred two years prior, impairing the ship's overall functionality. Urgently, they must locate and repair the cause lest the vessel becomes stranded. However, Mancuso faints, leading Aurora and Jim to guide him to the infirmary. Despite their efforts, Mancuso is terminally ill and no treatment can prolong his life. Eventually, the trio convenes in the observatory where Mancuso passes his ID bracelet to Jim and instructs them to address the ship's problems. Tragically, Mancuso succumbs to his illness. Suddenly, the lighting shifts to an alarming red hue and the ship begins to tremble. Jim implores Aurora for assistance and they rush towards engineering, yet encounter another gravity drive failure. Shortly thereafter, Arthur also suffers a malfunction, prompting Jim to deactivate him. Eventually, they reach engineering and commence their search for the issue. They pinpoint the problem in the power plant, causing Aurora to get sucked into a breach in the hull as they open the hatch. Jim manages to hold on, but the hatch closes on him, pulling him in as well. Swiftly, they seal the breach. After repairing that problem, Jim realizes there are additional breaches in the hull. Following the meteor's trajectory, they discover that it has struck the reactor control computer. Jim believes he can locate replacement parts and successfully does so. However, manually venting the reactor proves unsuccessful. Jim realizes that in order to cool down the reactor, he needs to open the vent door from outside the ship. They both go to the airlock, and before Jim heads out, he gives Aurora Mancuso's bracelet, just in case he doesn't make it back. Aurora helps him with his suit, expressing her concern for his safety. As Jim enters the airlock, Aurora pleads for him to return, as she cannot imagine living on the ship without him. Meanwhile, Aurora returns to the overheating reactor. Unfortunately, a bolt from the reactor hits her arm just as Jim approaches the vent door from the outside and spots it. The temperature inside the reactor room continues to rise as Jim attempts to bypass the vent door. Realizing that he must manually hold the door open for the reactor to vent properly, Jim communicates the plan to Aurora. Although she dislikes the idea, Jim insists that they have to save the other people on board the ship. Finally, Aurora agrees to vent the reactor. The procedure goes smoothly, but the fumes from the reactor push Jim away, causing his tether to break. As a result, the pressure in his suit starts to drop. Jim quickly informs Aurora about the situation, prompting her to rush and find another suit to rescue him. Apologizing to her once more, Jim waits for her arrival. Aurora equips herself with a suit and heads out, but realizes that her tether is too short. However, she manages to grab onto Jim's tether and skillfully pulls him back inside the ship. Exhausted, Aurora drags Jim into the infirmary, only to discover that he has already succumbed to his injuries. Determined to revive him, she uses Mancuso's bracelet to override the medical protocols and begins the resuscitation process. Fortunately, the medical pod successfully revives Jim. Aurora forgives him for his actions, knowing that they were made with good intentions. Later, Aurora fixes Arthur, the ship's AI, and they perform a respectful space burial for Mancuso. As Jim takes Aurora to the infirmary, he reveals that he has found a way to use the medical pod as a hibernation chamber. He suggests that Aurora get inside and complete the rest of the journey that way. However, she surprises him by declining the offer, choosing instead to stay awake on board the ship with him. In a heartwarming moment, Jim finally proposes to Aurora, and they spend the rest of their lives together on the ship. When the Avalon arrives at Homestead 2, 88 years later, the awakened crew finds the ship in an unexpected state. Aurora leaves them a message, sharing the story of the life she and Jim built on the ship, while everyone else was in hibernation. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this.